Prairie Mac WFT Sam Payne 90.1 on your FM dial. And Dave on the board. Today is Sunday, February the 23rd, 2020, and you're tuned to the Prairie Monk program, WEFT's weekly look at rails, trails, greenways, conservation, and education, and whatever else Dave has been up to and is planning to be up to in the coming weeks. Yes. Uh, we've been going through in the last few weeks uh, various aspects of uh, planning and uh, hopefully extending some of our natural areas. Uh, I want to continue that. Every once in a while we bounce in with another type of program that gives you an idea of nature and nurture, but uh, basically we're here to, to preserve the dignity of some natural areas. Uh, this week I'll be off to a uh, Prairie State Conservation Coalition meeting uh, at Starved Rock. And uh, that is very innovative. It's probably about 10 or 15 years old but now. Uh, a lot of support from Fran Harty, who was uh, the regional director for about natural resources in this area. And then... Uh, has become a, a leader in the Nature Conservancy. Uh, and he's done a lot of politicking uh, to get uh, things like stewardship into action and uh, to see that taxes are, uh, don't uh, discourage people from keeping the natural areas and forests. And uh, so he's been joined by a, a uh, a very nice group of people uh, f from a diverse interest. Uh, they, some of them come from the ring counties because there are so many people and so many interests there. Uh, but some of them come from way down south, uh, looking after the Mississippi River or the Illinois River. Uh, and uh, some are lawyers. Uh, some are park district professionals. I have a high regard for this group. Uh, they sometimes might be disappointed with what I do, but uh, that's okay. We're w waiting and seeing how the Kickapoo end of things works out. Uh, we're watching the, the recreators who are often uh, control the preservation people and take a wide swipe out of the prairie we want to preserve. So, uh, PSCC, PSCC, Prairie State Conservation Coalition. It uh, connects with people, brings people, often other uh, not-for-profit organizations together and so they are a not-for-profit 501c3 themselves, but they're bringing together uh, groups that are not always sure of themselves and uh, uh, need help. And uh, they've been able to, to do that. Uh, they provide education and training. So part of this conference is getting together people who tell you, this is how you do this, and this is how you do that. And uh, uh, David's been there, and uh, I think he's enjoyed some of this debate. And uh, we learn and we interact. Uh, uh, just talking to people at a banquet or at uh, talk, uh, conservation times, uh, uh, it, it it brings people together. Some of these people know each other from many different fields. Uh -huh. So there, there are probably 20, 30 different uh, agencies that overlap. Uh, so 
some may be on a state committee, but they're also on their local committee. Uh, collectives of these organizations have brought together 200,000 acres of open space. Um, uh, one of the things that they've done pretty well has been to document the land trust. We have a uh, associate, David Holman, who each year puts together a uh, report on what has happened locally, and that happening may involve several different groups. Uh, but it's and so uh, not all of it is responsible. The responsibility of uh, Prairie State Conservation Coalition involvement. But uh, it's the sort of thing they should know about and we should know about as, as members. Right? The members pay according to their volume. Some of the bigger park districts in Chicago are huge, and so it, it's a, a various membership. Some people have a number of different members, uh, and there's a, a news item for it, uh, and some of it includes our own area, Grand Prairie Friends, who are uh, looking for an intern. Uh, they 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 have interns in the summertime, and those interns often become leaders in the conservation game. Uh, this news about stewardship uh, last year, some uh, the reporting on that was very favourable, and this year, uh, once you get a, 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 a state or federal mandate, then the rule people have to get into the act and, and create the rules by which uh, stewardship may provide funding, for instance. Uh, there's a George and Barbara Fell award that has to be uh, assigned. Uh, George Fell and Barbara Fell went to Washington to create the Nature Conservancy and did so, then came back to Illinois to create forest preserves and nature preserves and an institute for research. Um, the Prairie Rivers Network is another of our own territories. Uh, and it was a mid-state educational which dealt with landfills. And, but now they've been concentrating on r river networks. And uh, they have a CEO and, and do a lot of work. Uh, and amongst all these things, it's talking to each other which counts. Even if you start off in... Uh, royal opposition. It may take 15 years. I can remember one lecture that was explaining that the person who owned the development in a natural area that was going to be preserved was violently opposed to this move. But it took 15 years and he became an advocate. It's a it, it, it means that uh, talking to each other, even if you're in a different school, is, is extremely important. Uh, we don't always know what's in other people's minds. And, uh, uh, so the board of directors for this organization is also very diverse. And... and uh, uh, we applaud that. Some of them come from locally. Deanna Glossers are there. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but uh, one of the members of the uh, Grand Prairie Friends is on the Prairie State Conservation Coalition Board. The conference itself will have a summary, and that is interesting. And... Uh, you can you can pull a, a, 
a detail off the internet uh, if you uh, are intrigued. Uh, it is an overview, David Holman's uh, report on all the little different places that have done something, and he's included a map with a, a yellow line around the map to show where uh, uh, this is uh, occurring and uh, how you get there and what has been done and what might be done. Uh, so uh, I've condensed this on my flyer, but it's uh, you can get it in open style uh, from the internet. Uh, uh, David lists three bests, and the three bests are really bests. Uh, the first one is the, the Department of Natural Resources itself. Uh, it doesn't always have a lot of money. It gets some funds from uh, fishing licenses and, and the like. But often it's a target for taking money to go to other, uh, presumably more deserving causes. Uh, the uh, what they've done is that they're in an awkward situation. They're at Starved Rock, and Starved Rock uh, is a, a place where there is very good gravel. It's often used for making glass and things like that. The world is run, running out of this sort of gravel, and and just down the road there's Madison Park which also uh, is in the same sort of territory with the ravines and the like, but it has been mined over. So it would seem that DNR has acquired over 2,000 2, acres there. And uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's awkward because the Department of Natural Resources is in charge of the sand and the gravel and the limestone. <laughs> and at the same time, they're in charge of the natural resources that might get screwed up by the, the sand and the gravel and the limestone. Uh, so they bought some land, probably 150 acres in the vicinity of uh, Starved Rock, and uh, uh, quite a few acres around Madison, uh, Matheson State Park. It, it's it's. Uh, partially for preservation, partially for restoration of mining areas, and uh, partially for natural resources, uh, little ravines and, and places that is very popular for, for, for Chicago. So that was one of the three that David thought was the best. The next one is a, a, an army closeout, uh, uh, Army Air Force, uh, Navy base, I'm not quite sure which, at Lake Forest, uh, north of Chicago, where uh, the Army Corps of Engineers has been very cooperative in, in cleaning up uh, waste areas and uh, planting trees to stop erosion. And uh, so that's number two. Uh, Number three is Natusa, and there uh, Natusa has uh, expanded. It's uh, an area owned by the Department of Nature, uh, sorry, the Nature Conservancy. And uh, they had a, a research project which was to, t to see how the herbicides that they use for probably more for spot herbiciding than for blanket herbiciding, but. Uh, did it affect the native mice that were there? And strangely, they found out that it didn't. So their hypothesis that it would uh, went into a null hypothesis, which says that this particular study, the, the, the herbicide that was being used and how it was being used was uh, okay. The, the, the mice survived and not, may not be sure why that happened, but it's a good indication that their research should be replicated in other places, and uh, it may be an actual fact. Uh, so uh, 
Is that that is interesting. Uh, Jack White sometimes uh, is a little critical of putting t too many bison on the uh, Natusha resources. Uh, his feeling is that uh, we didn't have a lot of bison and to uh, overstock may be dangerous to the natural restoration or, uh, or what is there in the first place. Uh, then there is in here <coughs> planning. And a plea for doable slices. Uh, you can have a dream and and it, it may not be uh, doable. Uh, so it's a uh, it's, it's it's a sort of unreality, especially if it's a large area or has large problems like rivers and whatnot. So the plea is to be sensible to have a, a, a plan. And we've been running through this sort of thing for strategic action plans. We've been looking at Monticello as a place where there are railroads and rivers and natural areas that come together in a nice fashion. And with a little help, you could do tourism that is uh, not an outrageous tourism, but but a very interesting tourism, a sort of tourism that brings energy to your community, near to Decatur, near to University of Illinois, Champaign Urbana, and and so a, a strategic action plan, which is overall is very helpful. We're not sure that we're quite ready for that yet because people have to be educated about what they do. And if you leave people to little pockets of their own, they don't always get a chance to see an overall picture. Uh, so uh, going into planning with a plan and saying, this is what we as conservationists feel is there. Uh, would you like to become a little bit better oriented or knowledgeable about this and come together with us? It may be you're quite opposed. We don't uh, object to that at all. Uh, come with your interests, and uh, but we need to give you enough to lock into in the first place. Uh, if the plan is too nebulous, it will never work. Uh, uh, I'm cautious about uh, l looking at railroad beds, for instance. We have a f problem of trying to get historic trains into Champaign, and not everyone thinks that's a good idea, but it, in other times it, it may be a, a good idea because Champaign is looking for a national hockey team. And a... a, a, a building facility that's big enough to invite venues other than hockey so that it has a dual purpose. Well then, how do you relate that to the natural area set at 25 mile away at Allerton Park, at, at Lodge Park, at La Shady Rest? Uh, how, how do we bring these together? The Sangamon River and the beauty of it trust bridges and the like. Uh, well, there are little things like I would like to see the railroad extend down to Shady Rest so that you could take people by train to a, what probably was a Chautauqua era when there were no cars. You had to get there by sulky or, or by train. And... Uh, but there's a, a, a construct there where uh, engine drivers that have been vilified for running in, uh, into cars that persist in going across level crossings and get killed. So 
how do you suggest that uh, this one mile of stretch could be both used by people and by the, the railroad? The railroad people, uh, I've often never ridden in a train. And just to go three miles from the Nelson's Crossing up the hill to Whiteheath and then down to Shady Rest is an experience. But if you have been around railroad lines at all, you know that people are going to walk on them. And so we need a, a, a something to bring the, uh, the trail and the rails together. Uh, it's impossible to put them one by side of each other because one, that takes out the natural resources, but two, it uh, there are bridges and trestles and... Uh, uh, embankments that are so high that you couldn't do that. You, you, if you want a trail, you have to go across that bridge or across that uh, th that uh, uh, embankment. And so that is the sort of negotiation we're going on with at the moment as to how that could, can be uh, organized. Uh, the same situation we have railroaders who would like to make a statement about where the railroad is by planting cypress trees that for us are weed trees and they very easily spread into a uh, into a prairie corridor where fortunately for some of it does not have power lines that get herbicided. So that's, that's a sort of local issue that you might want to say, now we have 33 miles of railroad bed there. How do they relate to Allerton Park? How do you put a bicycle through Allerton Park? Can you have an, a narrow trail uh, that preserves the prairie on either side? Well, no, there's always a, the, the recreators who get money from the state and the federal government to make a very wide trail for ADA and for a, EPA and, and so once again, you have a, a debate about how we can do this. Uh, we have established, at, uh, Monticello City has put in a, uh, a narrow trail. It's uh, about eight feet wide, which is enough for bicycles to pass on, if you're careful. And if it goes over a truss bridge. And I notice in the newspaper this week, a photograph from that's been taken from the bridge of the floodwaters that are there, or, or the, the unique uh, snowstorm that we had that stuck to the trees and it looked like fairyland out there, and it was taken from the bridge. Uh, it, it has to be cared for. It has to be maintained. Uh, unfortunately, part of the trestle was brought down by fire by young people that were horsing around with it. And that cost uh, probably 100000 to replace that piece. Uh, so once again, you're, you're in c conflict zone, but it's friendly conflict zone. It's like you're, it, 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 at least you're talking on the same w wavelength, uh, but with differences. Uh, but let's get together and do that. Let's, let's find out where that trail between Monticello and Allerton Park is going to go through Allerton Park and how you can make a circuit. Do we have a plan for, for that sort of bicycle way? Yes, sort of tentatively. It's, it's not written down. It's not well documented. And that's what the people are, are saying uh, is that you, you or the conservationists are saying you need to put an actual number on this. You need, if you're going to put in that four miles, then you need to know how the other uh, ten miles will be related. Uh, how you, will you relate to uh, Champaign-Urbana and Decatur? Uh, uh, how do you re relate to people who are traveling across the country? Just like to stop off at a place like Monticello with a, 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 an intact city 
uh, or county seat, uh, and, and and intact uh, storefronts and 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 people who care about their schooling and their uh, uh, their ch- churches and their institutions. Uh, uh, so one of the things you can do is you can make a survey. So uh, being Cluey, the Prairie State Conservation Coalition before Christmas uh, enlisted a, a survey group, and I think they're after money to do survey work. And uh, you've got to be careful. If you survey too soon, you're likely to lose. Uh, if you have a, a liberal city and a not so liberal uh, regional area, then there's a conflict between the two. Uh, uh, so at the moment, uh, I was very interested in the, the concept of a, a survey that would be uh, not just a, a yes or no. It's one where the, somebody with the degree in planning or architecture or what have you, art if necessary, uh, has put down perhaps 20 or 30 uh, things to allow you to think about what you might want. And the, each category might have a five or six uh, alternatives, <laughs> including ones that you haven't thought about. <coughs> so... Once again, you don't go into a survey cold. You go into a survey with information available. Uh, the Ring counties in Chicago are doing it. Uh, but they've been at this for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, seven, six, sometimes at seven and sometimes at six. The Ring counties have been always uh, voting for more natural areas uh, uh, rather than more population and uh, uh, certain lifestyle. And uh, so the people there are reasonably educated. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, they are going to know their own community fairly well, but they don't always know the, the community that is... Uh, 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 a broader concept. So, once again, you need a lot of publicity, uh, a lot of uh, intellect, and a survey that goes to a, a lot of people. It needs to be on uh, 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 on s- storylines that go with county seats or township supervisors or schools or churches or. Uh, institutions like the University of Illinois. Uh, there's people there that will have a lot to say uh, because they are in an advantageous p- position to, to, to make a statement. Uh, and uh, so uh, surveys are, are very, very helpful in that situation. Let me see what... Uh, yes. I think you're getting the message of of some of what I'm listening to in the Prairie State Conservation Coalition. And at the end of the meeting, there will be a, an assessment and an invitation for people to, to say perhaps what they might dream to be doing. Mm-hmm. And in that case, we might have some thoughts about East Central Illinois. We just lost 30 miles of railbred prairie in the Arcola area, uh, Arthur, Paris. And, and, and that part of that is because we really haven't been in a position to, to acquire that land. Well, the Department of Natural Resources acquired it, but has then lost it because uh, there was pressure from the farmers for a, a few more rows of corn and soybeans, not realizing the genetic value of the material that is there. Uh, so let me go to the to the uh, meeting, and I would like to see some people go to that meeting that I don't see there. Uh, 
uh, they don't maybe not know about it. But uh, uh, there's a business meeting to start off with, uh, so uh, that that gets uh, uh, away from the problem that business meetings can dominate your 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 event. Uh, Packer has been having that problem recently. Uh, the if the business meeting gets to be controversial, it can take over the the, the annual meeting. So they've split their annual meeting so that they have a, a, a the annual meeting is is somewhere and and the awards meeting is is somewhere else. And that is because the people who come to have an award for their house or their building. Uh, don't really enjoy sitting through a lot of local debate about the politics of what you want to do and, and how. So, so to get a, a business meeting out of the way quickly is is good. That means people can even arrive after the business meeting and still be part of the the uh, program. Yeah, uh, there's usually an annual report. And in this case, David Holman is a is a gem. He uh, puts together this annual report, which is about fifty five pages long, and he's not afraid to make comments about who does what and where. And and uh, he spends a lot of his lifetime doing this sort of thing for agencies. And uh, he he has a a bang up job. He he won't be talking for very long. Uh, you've already received uh, these sorts of reports, and uh, to advantage, he has the technology where he can pull up maps for each place. And we have to debate about that and so what we do because it's not always easy to create a map and and then put a arrow on the place and put a note on the place. And, and explain it a little bit. So he is clever enough that he takes uh, a region, say it's uh, Joe Davies County in the northwest corner, uh, and there might be six agencies, and he will give you a friendly summary of what those agencies are doing uh, in total. And then he'll get into the specifics of that. And, uh, and in order to do that, he has to be gathering up information from people who are not always in the position to make a, a, a formal report. You might even look at our own Heartland Pathways as to whether we have the, the, the right information to, to put into that. So that's a, that's a task in its first. Uh, but it gives people a rough idea of what it is that Prairie State Conservation uh, Coalition cares about. Then there's a, a legislative review. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, there was an environmental group that got together in the 60s, and uh, there were two types of people there. There were the people who wanted reform and, and uh, change of law and things like that, and there were people who were struggling to do environmental education in the classroom. So they split, and so you have the school science curriculum. Uh, no, it was, uh, I forget the title of it, but it was uh, uh, the Illinois, uh, it was basically the Science Teachers Association and, and science education and the universities that are training people to to be the trainers of teachers. Uh, uh, the other agency is the uh, Illinois Environmental Council, and Jennifer Walling will be there. And Jennifer has been with the University of Illinois. She was a powerhouse in, in the YMCA, was early on, created a... Uh, Students for Environmental Concern, and she was there. But she is in charge of the spin-off group, which is interested in reform. So 
she'll be giving a, a, a response. Uh, there is a stewardship movement, of course, and uh, it's very positive. It, it gives agencies that are doing a lot of volunteer stewardship uh, enough to to apply for uh, support. Sometimes that support is leadership support. Uh, uh, so that will be uh, Anne-Marie Haltrop, and she's... Uh, part of the uh, Division of Natural Heritage within the Department of Re Natural Resources. Uh, and uh, that, again, gives you some information. Uh, then there's a, uh, an LTA report, uh, Land Trust Alliance, and Kevin Case will be there, from uh, and and uh, that will orient to east, uh, the eastern division of uh, Illinois, which is often uh, denied conservation development because the land is so rich that every inch is worth money for corn and soybeans or cattle if you have an area that's rambunctious and can't be worked. Let me see what... Uh, then there's some theme th that conservation perspectives. Uh, uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion of conservation. So how do we look at Monticello with the railroad museum and railroads that have closed out, and connections between Champaign, and so how you talk to engineers at the same time as you're talking to natural history people, and uh, so, yeah. You have to be, I'm reminded to say this, you have to be in a room where you, if you have a 50 or 100 people, you have to be able to hear. The Starved Rock site is not awfully good at that. It, uh, it, it has a very noisy uh, air conditioner and it has uh, a sound that is, is not always hearable, especially if in certain places in the, in the room. And, and so uh, I've had a... a a word or two to say about that, uh, because I realize that that uh, magnification of sound is a very technical business, and David would know about that. And it's it's uh, you can have a very directional mic, you can have a mic with power on it, uh, you can have a broad-based uh, mic, and. And you have to figure out where you're going to put the mics. Uh, do, do you put the mic in front of the speaker, so the speaker comes out with a, or the 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 visual comes out with a, the picture of a, a microphone, mm -hmm. in in front of it. Uh, so <coughs> we break for a while and then back again. An application for. Uh, that's ArcGIS. Arc is the name of a company, and GIS is Geological Information Systems. That means people who take layers and layers of data. What part of the state are we in? What's underlying where we're, we are? Where's the nearest land dump, uh, landfill? Um, a really common way to do this, to use this sort of data, is to say, we need to have a new landfill in this area. Would it be okay to put it here? And then you show them the data that says 300 feet beneath that, where you want that dump, that's called the Muhammad Aquifer. Not a smart place to put a dump that's going to be filled with all the rubbish and things people weren't supposed to throw away, but they did anyway. You know, acid and, 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 you know, old batteries and all sorts of stuff. So that's what this person is going to talk about is how you use um, these fancy computer systems um, for restoration and stewardship. I'm really sorry I can't actually go with you this year. I just uh, told Dave this before the show um, because they're always fascinating. They always put in a little bit of tech that <laughs> makes my heart beat very happily. Um, I'm really curious to see 
how these people are going to use this um, technology to help with natural areas. Yes, and, and co- computerization generally can be very helpful. I'm, I'm thinking of the, the forensic in, uh, biologist who, who find a DNA and, and if you can attach uh, uh, an isotope to it, you can you can find out where the uh, mites, the the small insects, are working, and if they've been working on a body, then you might be able to track in a manner that you couldn't have done f- five years ago. Just uh, uh, so I'm very glad that David has said something about that because I'm not on. I don't have GIS in my head. And then there's farm preservation. How do we look at the Farm Bureau? How do we work with the Farm Bureau? How do we work with soils? And <coughs> uh, there has been uh, a six-generation uh, move to take over the natural resources. Uh, it was prairie, basically, and... and uh, it's very good soil. It comes from the Laurentian Shield in Canada, and, and it's very mixed and fertile. Uh, so there's a tendency to to use it. In some places, if you go to Loda, the the farm worked soil next to a, an undisturbed uh, cemetery reserve, there's about ten inches difference between the heights. That's, that means that that soil, you know, along with uh, phosphorus and nitrogen and sulfur that's gone down the rivers, uh, there's a tendency to think that if you put in a, a pound of fertilizer per acre, then two pounds is better, which isn't the case. So we have uh, agricultural researchers who are very oriented to those big uh, uh, cultivation uh tractors now have computers on them and uh, if you have a uh, a sandy soil that doesn't uh, take the uh, ions uh, of the chemistry uh, on its surface because they don't have a lot of charge then you don't put a lot of fertilizer there (laughs) but if you're on a drummer and a flanagan soil that has lots of cation exchange capacity then you you change your uh, fertilizer input. And that excess fertilizer has gone down the rivers and created a dead zone in, in uh, uh, the Gulf. Uh, so uh, farm practices are being looked at and farm people are, uh, are very oriented to this. And they're, they're getting to be uh, quite helpful in, in uh, installing uh, uh, variable applications of f- fertilizer, and, and sometimes it's it's herbicides or, or insecticides. If you have only one patch in your field that is is herbicide needing, you don't have to herbicide the whole field. You don't have to have a plane to come in and, and blanket spray. Uh, you can do it in other ways. Uh, uh, at the moment, we're dealing with a, a, a herbicide that is dicamber. And dicamber has organized its seed, uh, mainly by Monsanto, or been bought out by Bayer. Uh, the the uh, s- seed has been bred to accept the, the herbicide. But guess what? This... This spray uh, gets dried and it, blow, it, it, it disperses with the wind. So you have farmers who have lost their whole orchard to dicamba. Uh, the oranges get to be green and then they fall off. Uh, the peaches do something similar. The, 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 the uh, soybeans get to be... Uh, okay because they've been bred. That's if you bought from Monsanto. But if you are doing organic herbicide or organic food, then you're in risk of losing your whole crop. 
So there are lots of uh, legal cases at the moment uh, challenging the uh, use of that uh, herbicide. Uh, that also modes, means that you have to get right into the federal government um, because they have allowed it. And so the uh, administrators there have to think twice about whether they deny this dicamba. Then you have to think about the lobbyists who are going to lose money for having spent years uh, making this uh, herbicide uh, resistant uh, plant and then selling the herbicide at uh, quite a cost. Uh, so uh, we tend to realize then that this is not just a local situation, there is a state uh, uh, situation and then a federal situation. And sometimes in the case of dicamba, it's a, a, an international situation. Uh, so soil health is interesting. And I see soil science people moving into the prairie preservation movement too because they want the soil uh, to absorb the water. If, uh, if you have a farm with a slight rise, it's amazing. You only need a short hill and, and it, it, you have uh, windblown erosion and you have uh, water erosion. So you can build uh, contours. Uh, that catch the water and let it absorb. And then you have to deal with uh, the like of putting in mines. And we have a, a mine going in uh, on the southwest side of Vermilion County and the southeast side of Champaign County, uh, back beyond uh, uh, Homer, Homer and and. Uh, Jamaica in those places, uh, Jamaica being a, a small town in that vicinity. Uh, so what do you do with the tailings? Do you have ponds of, of uh, high sulfur uh, material? Do the ponds break loose? Uh, do the ponds have a, a clay background so that it doesn't leach into the aquifer? Do we eventually drink this stuff? Uh, so there's a, a big debate in Vermilion and Champaign County about the location of a uh, of a, a mine and where do the tailings go? One of the thoughts is we have mines in that area, underground mines that are not open, cut mines. and. Oh, let's get rid of the water by just putting it down the mine. So that means that eventually that oozes into the underground aquifers. So we looking at the soil is pretty important. Uh, and there'll be several people that I recognize as names. Uh, Lisa Haldane is one. And, and uh, uh, then there's, there's, there's the possibility of converting the farmland. Uh, I've been in situations where uh, the gentleman has been deciding to to close out, and the family hasn't been quite uh, oriented to pr preservation. They don't know which way to go. They're probably arguing, and bless me, the the, the owner decides to cut the forest down for lumber. Uh, so. If there is a state situation, if there is a tax situation that makes that uh, possible for the owner to keep it and to placate the uh, members of the family and to allow for living on that site, then that requires some rulemaking and uh, uh, some liberalities and uh, how do we do that? It's, uh, so that's 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 the first day. Well, let me see how much time I've got. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Let me see what the second day is. I hate to bore you with the, with the meeting details, but I think that they tell you what what this organisation is up to, and it's very good. Oh, the second day is 
toolboxes. <laughs> and one of the toolboxes is philanthropy. And, and uh, interestingly, most of the preservation that's going on at the present time is done through philanthropy. So how do you talk to your philanthropist? How do you uh, explain what you're doing and why? And, and bringing them into the uh, situation. So they almost become an expert in what they might be contributing to. And, uh, so that's, that's one of the leads. Uh, th there are certain th uh, pr problems that arise, and one of the ones we were just talking about was a dicamba. So that's, there's a toolbox associated with that. You've got to recognize the leaf. How does it uh, go wobbly? And and how how do you uh, uh, check to see that it's it's a problem even before you you can recognize it in the field? Uh, then there are all sorts of uh, finance details. <laughs> do you start off with a very small uh, grant? I've been talking to a, a concrete person and. He, he was thinking that he, he would like to buy our, our Pope Prairie. <laughs> and I had to explain that this was a, a conservation site, and so he's changed his the style there. But the uh, two mile of, of, of prairie uh, in, in the, uh, or two mile of Sangam Bridge Trail at Monticello, is is uh, uh, there uh, and and uh, we, we look for floodplain uh, uh, funding or uh, so he, that person who is doing concrete might be a person that would restore the uh, or put down a, a concrete surface on a mile of of a rail trail that's. Uh, uh, extended the uh, Sangamon Bridge Trail, uh, so he, he, there are there are skills in here. Uh, there's one uh, one of the board members is is very good at this. Uh, George Cunnington, he, he comes. He's a very good at tax organization and things like that. Uh, and there's also water quality. Some of the people that have rural settings. Uh, have wells, and they don't even realize that their well might be full of nitrates, and and uh, they've been put down there many years ago, and people didn't do this sort of thing. So, so one of the cluey people has gone around. They go around schools and get their school kids to to do nitrogen t tests in their chemical uh, situation, so they can go home and say. My my, this this well mm -hmm. is really uh, screwing up our pregnancies or uh, uh, our general health. Uh, so water quality is another one, and uh, and there will be a wrap up where people will uh, be evil minded enough to to, to 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 say what they think and and uh, comment on what they might want to do in the future. And that's just a, it's more or less a uh, one day, two day conference. You, you arrive late in the morning, about 11 o'clock, and you leave at about 12 o'clock. So it's one night over, and that's enough to get people together, and we appreciate it very much, I think. Uh, just one comment that I'll make uh, before we go is that the Insect Fear Festival is on. Saturday night, and I have to say that May Berenbaum, who's uh, chair of the uh, entomology department, but also a leader in university activities, uh, she came here uh, many years ago uh, from Cornell, and uh, there she had tried to run a f insect film f <coughs> festival, and didn't quite work, but here it worked. She got to be uh, uh, 
working with Lukaski, the, the film critic, and, and uh, she, they eventually married and had a, a daughter named Hannah. And, and uh, this is a, a family affair. And, and uh, this week they were talking about crustaceans other than insects. And, and so uh, I grew up with ticks, for instance, and ticks are not an insect. <laughs> and I would have ticks on my cows, and you would have to try and pick them off or uh, more carefully put kerosene on them uh, so that they would back out. Uh, and, and ticks can carry disease. But basically the insects are on land and the crustaceans are like lobsters and crabs and they're in the, the water. And you have to wonder how that sorted itself out. Uh, but May was, uh, uh, early on in her career, uh, w was a wefty. Mm. And she did knits, gnats and insects and was on a, as a regular program here. Yeah. Uh, she's very interested in bees and has a national reputation for doing that. And, and they obviously have a, a fairly heavy uh, audience because it's held in the auditorium. Mm. And it used to be held in the Natural History Building. And so, uh, well, we'll report on the the, the, the uh, Perry State Conservation Coalition when we come back, and uh, uh, keep your eye on on these sorts of things that start very small. Uh, I can remember natural history people made big efforts to get ten different agencies together to have a combined interest in this. It hasn't always happened. The Nature Conservancy is different from the uh, Busey Woods. Uh, it's different from the uh, Isaac Walton League and the Sierra Club. And it, it's very hard to get those groups together. But there are coalitions, and sometimes they last for a short, short time. Sometimes they're oriented to something like a mine. Uh, or a, a, a landfill, or uh, David was talking about. Uh, there are occasions when you can get them together, and uh, sometimes they just die all together. The Isaac Walton League has, has retired mm -hmm. here, so I think it's time to go. This is Dave Monk, your Prairie Monk, WEFT Champagne, 90.1 on your FM dial. And Dave on the board. As always, the views and opinions expressed are solely those of the speakers and no one else.